I was gonna shake your hand, but we don't have to do that. Hey guys, I feel so famous. Um, okay, so I'm obviously here to talk about humor. I see all of you attentively waiting to be, for me to be funny, that's a lot of pressure. Um, I'm gonna do this. Uh, improv, right? Improv gets a bad rap because you've probably, you have a friend that's dabbled in improv classes uh, and they're like, hey, come to my show. And you're like, I'm busy that night. And they're like, I didn't tell you when it was. <laughs> but there are so many principles of improv and of humor in general uh, that can help you shape your marketing copy, that can help you connect better with your users, build loyalty, uh, increase retention. And so I'm gonna show you some of those today. Why do I care so much about this? It's what I do all the time. I perform improv probably too much. Um, my parents have managed to miss all my shows, which is like a feat in its own for them. Um, I also do sketch and stand-up comedy, uh, and I read a bunch of books about it. In case you're interested, this is my reading list. It's really good. Uh, I built my whole business on it. Y'all are like, she's getting a little crazy with this. I don't know if we like her so much anymore. Um, and I'm actually the first search result for funny copywriter on Google, um, and probably Bing, but we don't know because no one's ever used it. <laughs> You're like, why is she telling us all this? Except to prove that she's kind of a douche. Well, my point is, if your SaaS is not using humor, you're just not getting the results you deserve. You're not making really genuine connections with your users. Um, so I'm gonna run you through a few uh, quick examples of people that I've worked with. Y'all know Mike Tabor, right? Co-runs this conference, yay hi. Uh, this is his product, uh, Rob just mentioned, it's called Blue Tick. Um, I worked with Mike on the new website copy, uh, and we were trying to get people to stay on the site, uh, read through the copy, and better understand what Blue Tick does, because it's kind of a complicated tool sometimes. And so, what's notable about the new copy is that it's actually longer than the old copy, um, but the feedback that Mike is getting is that it's easier to understand what Bluetick does um, once you get to the site. So that was fun to do. Uh, another client that I've worked with, Manly Bands, uh, I rewrote some of their product descriptions for them, and they saw between a 20% and 196% increase in purchases uh, from just writing funny stuff that their audience wanted to read. So there is a connection between humor and money, and I just want to make that super clear at the top in case any of you are thinking of getting a second cup of coffee. And in case some of you are like, that's well and good, but my software isn't funny. There's no room for humor in my brand. My, my last and final client, Mapistry, I love them dearly. They have the, the most boring product I've ever heard of. Um, it is stormwater compliance monitoring software. <laughs> Literally watching rainfall. <laughs> And I work with them on a bi-monthly email uh, that's just collecting stormwater news, and this is the kind of reaction that they're getting uh, from their readers. People love it. And in fact, we surveyed their list and we said, do you prefer the old emails that were just sort of straightforward, no gifs, no jokes? Uh, and everyone said, we like the new emails better. We like being entertained. So today, I'm gonna show you why humor affects us and why it sometimes feels uncomfortable to go for a joke um, and how humor works in the brain. I'm gonna show you where in your marketing funnel that you should use humor to its best effect to capitalize on your effort, because it is you know, an effort to start doing it. And I'm gonna show you how to punch up your copy line by line. And these are tweaks that anybody can make. Doesn't matter if you're a copywriter or not. Uh, I think there's only like four of us here. We're a dying breed. That's not true. We multiply. Leave us alone in a room. Come back and there's 10 more. <laughs> so, why does humor affect us the way that it does? Specifically, why does it feel weird and uncomfortable to make a joke? And the simplest reason is that joking makes us feel vulnerable. Uh, we don't want to put ourselves out there, especially if somebody might not laugh. Uh, and to illustrate this concept, I'm going to make myself vulnerable right now. I'll tell you a story. A few years ago, I was at a show, I was watching some live music, uh, had a few drinks, and out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a strapping young man who seemed to be facing me, could feel a vibe, you know? And I was like, all right, I'm gonna just wait until the end of the show, have a few more drinks. And finally, at the end of the show, I got my courage up and I turned to face him, start a conversation. He was a suit of armor. <laughs> True story, I didn't drive home, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> that was bad, so that made me feel real vulnerable, but hopefully it also endeared me to you in some way that you can't name. 
there are other reasons that we don't feel comfortable using humor in our marketing. We remember past times when we've been made fun of. Uh, we were the butt of the joke. That never feels good. We always, you know, everybody here, I'm sure, remembers the first time that we fell for up dog. What's up dog? Not much dog. What's up with you? <laughs> Audience participation? <laughs> Check. Uh, and finally, Work is serious, right? We're all here because we bootstrapped our products, we pay for this ourselves, we need to feed our families and avoid taking money from evil venture capitalists. Sorry to those in the room, I love you, I'm sorry. Um, uh, so we don't, we don't feel comfortable bringing jokes into our marketing because this is what we do for a living. Uh, and finally, we don't want to offend our users. We don't want them to feel like the butt of the joke like we have so many times in the past. So we, keep it, we play it safe. Um, not everybody can be Cards Against Humanity. Uh, I love them so much. They call their, their users horrible friends um, and consumers, and I drink that up. I love that. That might not be your brand. And if you're thinking that I'm gonna tell you to do this, I'm not. You don't have to go that far. It's, it's gonna be okay. Um, but you should be playing on what humor uh, does to people's brains and leveraging that to your best effect. How does humor work in the brain? It activates parts that make us feel good. You laugh at a joke, parts of your brain light up, uh, and you associate whoever told the joke, as long as it's not about you, and sometimes even if it is, uh, with happiness and fulfillment. And it also helps us distinguish between two states of mind. There's a goal state of mind, when we're really focused on getting something done, we don't really have time uh, to take a break or laugh or enjoy anything. And then there's a play state of mind, when we're more receptive to humor and jokes. Uh, we're more willing to have fun. And if you are sending out emails and you're using microcopy inside your product and you're helping users get things done, but you're never making a joke ever, never ever being funny, you might inadvertently be making your users feel like your product is a taskmaster. So no matter how productive they can be using your SaaS, you, they still feel like, okay, this is work. I'm gonna get this done. And then when another, another tool comes along that might help them do it better, they have no real connection with you. They might just switch right over. That sounds terrible, right? Humor is also a really effective way to introduce bad news. Um, this is a campaign by Unbounce, which is a landing page software I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Uh, they had to change their pricing plans, uh, and they had to tell users somehow, and so they created this whole chief discount officer campaign. That's not a real guy. I mean, he works at Unbounce, but uh, that's not how he dresses. He, they made him a fake LinkedIn profile. They sent out coffee-stained flyers, um, and they told people, and they told some people their prices were going to go up. And the reaction they got was still really good because people were like, I love this campaign. So, now you're like, okay, how, great, how do I make a joke? What is a joke? I don't understand, teach me. Um, no one said that, that's, there are some Germans here. That was my German accent, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> how do you know what to make fun of? If you're invested now in the idea of making a joke, great, how do you know what to make fun of? This is where you should go back to your customer research, which all of you are doing, right? You're all doing it. Everyone's like, yep, we're asking our users what they love and fear and hate and dread, and we're using that in our copy, right? So take a break from asking them problem and product focus questions. Oh, an angel just got its wings. <laughs> Take a break from asking those um, very product-specific questions uh, and ask your users what they think is funny. Ask them about their favorite shows and movies uh, and books and stand-up comedians uh, and cartoons. Uh, so here's an example of a quiz that I actually ask my clients. This is just one page. I ask them which meme they find funniest. And after they go through this quiz, I have a solid understanding of what kind of humor they like. Highbrow or lowbrow, um, witty, intellectual, dark and morbid. It gives me a really good sense of what to make fun of uh, and what to reference uh, to bring back later in GIFs and things like that, which I'll get to. So when you collect this data from your users, look for those patterns. Maybe you find out that everybody loves Seinfeld, but they hate friends. Um, I think both of them are garbage, for the record. Uh, maybe you find out that they really like buddy cop movies for some reason, so you want to bring that dynamic into your marketing or even reference some of those movies. You'll never know until you ask. Then what you're going to do 
is take that data and overlap it with your own sense of humor. If it's just you or if you have a team, you obviously know what your team thinks is funny. You're in Slack all day trading jokes. See where those things intersect. That's the place to make fun of stuff. Everything in that overlap is going to be appropriate and relevant and perfect for you to tap into. Those are your perfect topics. Oh, I'm a thirst monster. All right. So we talked about how to pick your humor topics. Let us talk about humor styles. It's how you deliver the jokes that you're going to give to your users. There are two fail-safe styles that I want to introduce to you today. Uh, this, the safest style is going to be observational humor. And then there's self-deprecation. So observational humor, Jerry Seinfeld is really famous for this. Uh, it involves seeing something in the world that we can both acknowledge and relate to, pointing out that it's kind of weird, noticing something incongruous about it, uh, but it's neutral. The user or the listener is not the butt of the joke. We're not the butt of the joke. This thing out in the world is, and we can all see it. So he's like, what's the deal with airplane food? Am I right? I've never seen a Seinfeld stand-up <laughs> show. Uh, wait, let me, let me um, customize it to this audience. Uh, what's the deal with two-factor authentication? <laughs> yeah, there it is. OK, great. Uh, I won't ever do a Seinfeld impression again. Um, so what does observational humor look like when it comes to SaaS marketing copy? This is a company called Digit. They help you automate your savings. And they take something that we've all experienced, uh, the experience of just trying to buy a coffee and accidentally overdrafting your account and getting stocked with a $35 fee. They notice it. They let us know that they've experienced that. It's not an outright joke, but it is funny. And they use it to introduce a new feature that they have that protects you from that. So it's super relevant, uh, and it endears me to them. Also, their texts are really good. You can text them, and they text you back. I have tried sexting them, and it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> moving on appropriately to the second kind of humor, self-deprecation. This is where you make fun of yourself or your product, because that's safe. You're the butt of the joke. No one can get mad at you for making fun of yourself, unless they're your therapist or life coach. Happens to me a lot. Um, and this is why I usually make fun of myself when I'm doing my talks, like I just did. This was me on stage last year at CTA Conf, and I walked out on stage, and the moment that I got there, I was like, oh no, I dress like Link from Legend of Zelda by accident. <laughs> and if I can point that out in front of 1,200 people, like you guys can write a joke in the email, I promise. So what does self-deprecation look like in an email? Uh, I mentioned Blue Tick earlier. Uh, this is an email that I worked on with Mike. Uh, I forgot to put the GIF in there, but it's a cat. He's going like, it's great. Um, and so we're making fun of Mike a little bit here, saying, just look at me now. The cat's supposed to be Mike. That's the joke. <laughs> Find me after the break. Um, I'll explain it to you. It's a moment where we cast our sense of humor back on ourselves um, to lighten the mood. So quick recap, visual joke there. Do you like how I'm just pointing out all my jokes in case you can't? <laughs> That's what everyone should do. Hmm. We, have, we have now talked about um, what topics to make fun of, how to deliver the jokes that you're going to make. Let's quickly talk about where in your marketing funnel you can use humor to best effect. So there are lots of places that you have copy, right? Virtually everywhere. I've never seen a SaaS product without copy. Has anyone? Hmm, and yet we still don't like paying for it. Hmm. It's so strange. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, so there are some places that are better suited to humor than others, right? My general rule of thumb is that you should never be using humor in your value proposition. Um, and just a quick reminder, the value prop is when users get to your website uh, and you have a quick line or two of text here, you need to quickly and clearly explain what it is you do and why your users should care. So it's not a great place to crack a joke because you run the risk of muddying up your value proposition and losing that prospect forever. So not a great place for humor. But if you're sending traffic to landing pages, which presumably you're targeting that traffic, you know more about those users, um, then, you can run, then you can crack a joke. Um, and the same goes for your website copy, the body copy. You want to keep people reading through. 
Jokes are one way to do that. If you surprise them with something as they're reading through your website, they're more likely to keep going. And finally, always, always, always use humor in your emails and inside your product itself because this is where you have that opportunity to build a real one-on-one -on -one relationship with your users. Um, and someone was up here yesterday talking about FOMO and he showed a screenshot from inside the app and it was a date range showing some data and instead of saying like, here is the data from this date range, it said, date range be like. I don't know if y'all noticed that. That's the kind of thing that I love and I look for in my SaaS products because it shows that someone's paying attention to my experience. All right, so who here is sending out emails? Good, good. Uh, who here is like super happy and content with the amount of engagement and response you're getting from your emails? <laughs> I just wanted to make you feel bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, that's why, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to focus on emails specifically, because we're all sending them, they could all be better, right? So let's get into how to punch up your copy. Um, these are punch-ups, I'm going to say that word a million times, punch-ups, punch-ups. Some of them are just simple, um, some of them are just best writing practice, uh, and some of them are simple tweaks that you can use to make copy funnier or more personable on a line level. Doesn't matter if you're a copywriter or not. Like I said, we're a dying breed until you turn around. Uh, so there's three categories of punch-ups. Show your emotions, piss off your grammar teacher, and lead the way. Let's start with show your emotions. And why do you want to show your emotions? I love this dog, by the way. I feel like he should be an internet superstar. If you know him, call me. Um, you want to show your emotions because, like we said, you're super excited about your product. You didn't spend all this time and effort building it to just send an email that arrives with the equivalent of a wet fart, right? You want to share your excitement with your users, and you can do that in your copy by using all caps. It's kind of like yelling. Like yelling, you should do it sparingly. Um, here's an example from a detergent company called Rock and Green, and almost all of the rest of my examples are SaaS, but I like this example because they get into uh, the emotion of doing laundry. The laundry! You can almost hear it. Notice it's only one word, because if they had this whole paragraph in caps, it would be like your grandmother learning to type. Um, and we don't want that. We don't want to be old people yelling on the internet with our copy. Uh, another way to show your emotion in your marketing copy is to use comic book words, like bang, boom, crash. Uh, these are, actually, when, when people read these, you hear them. It triggers a different part of the brain. Uh, you can hear the noise in your head, so it activates uh, more, more parts of the brain than just reading words. Here's an example from customer.io. There's actually two examples here, one above, one below. Those are two different emails. And they say, ta-da! And the next email, they say, whoosh, the sound of a new user leaving forever the sound that we hate so much. I feel like we should hear that ding again, like the angel losing his wings. No. <laughs> He's sad because you're not using onomatopoeia. <laughs> Another way to show your emotions is by making asides in your copy, almost as if you're whispering a secret into your user's ear. And you can do this using italics. Uh, you can put your asides in parentheses, um, pick your poison here, however you like to format your copy. So here's a great example from Warby Parker. It's a simple transactional email, password reset. Sorry to hear your password's gone missing. It happens to the best of us. It's kind of like, oh, okay. Someone wrote this, a human being wrote this, not a machine. Um, makes me more likely to buy from Warby Parker. And my favorite category, using GIFs and emoji. We can argue later about whether it's GIF or GIF. Um, it's GIF though. So, uh, along with being a super fun way to show readers uh, what you're getting at instead of telling them, this is an effective way to visually break up your copy. You don't want a wall of text. No matter what you're writing, you don't want a wall of text because people can't read it. So by using a GIF, you'll have a line break, you'll have a visual break, and you'll have some interest. So here's a simple email from AirStory. Uh, I'm going to mention Joanna Weeb just to check that box on my microconf bingo card. <laughs> I think you have to mention her if you're up here at least once. Um, this is her product, Air Story, and she just uses a simple rocket emoji to express excitement um, with the user. So I love that. Here's another example from Soapbox, uh, a video making tool from Wistia, and I couldn't get the GIF to load, so just imagine that all those people are doing this. They're really excited. Um, 
thought y'all were gonna laugh at that. That's okay, that's fine. <laughs> and a quick word of caution, it is possible to use GIFs badly. And I've, I've blanked out who this is here. So the reason this GIF is bad, there's multiple reasons. It's too small, it's too long, it goes too fast, and I have no idea what it is. And it's not relevant to needing to add my sync for the day. Fail, fail all around. So when you're choosing GIFs, make sure that they're short, relevant, you already know uh, what shows to reference because you've asked your users, um, and that they don't distract from what you're trying to get your users to actually do. So let's move on to the second category of punch-ups, piss off your grammar teacher. Um, this is a really easy to remember acronym, so definitely write that down. Poit, that's how I like to think it's said. Um, the first way to piss off your grammar teacher is to make mistakes. Um, you can make an intentional typo, um, you can punctuate incorrectly, uh, or my favorite, you can use strike through to make a joke that doesn't distract from your actual point. So this is Sumo, and they're saying, uh, I wanna go fast, Ricky Bobby. It's a reference, I think it's Talladega Nights and like John C. Riley. Yeah, uh, just in case people don't get that, it doesn't matter because they still get the point of the email, but the people who do get the joke will be secretly pleased, and then they'll probably go watch a Will Ferrell movie. Uh, another way to do that, like I said, is including a typo. Um, there are some studies that have shown including a typo in your email subject line uh, gets higher open rates. So here's Mark Littlewood, some of you may know him from BOS, and he says more new speakers to show that he's like up on the internet lingo. Uh, I loved it, great guy. Another way to piss off your grammar teacher, contract and abbreviate words, because we don't speak in full uh, uncontracted, we, we do not speak in this way, right? Uh, we need to, our copy needs to mimic how we speak in real life. So here's a bad example. I won't tell you who it's from. Hi, Liana. How is it going? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> That's what that made me feel like. <laughs> it's like, who wrote this? Uh, here's a better way to do it. This is just a simple contraction, simple abreaves. Uh, I want to know. It's how we text each other. It's how we talk to each other in real life. Why don't we write that way? Here are some simple abreaves that you can use. Bonus points if you put them in your emails uh, from your CEO, especially Totes Jelly. Like CEO of SaaS product here, I'm Totes Jelly of your user count. I don't know what it, no one's writing this email. Um, but definitely take advantage of using some of these, uh, and it's a simple way to go through your existing emails, contract words, and immediately come across as more friendly and approachable. Another best copywriting practice is to chop up your sentences. We get so excited about our stuff that we're like, here is everything it can do, all of it at once, and no one wants to read a sentence like that. Um, we have been told not to use sentence fragments, Every sentence should have like a noun and a verb, maybe a preposition, no one remembers what those are. Um, but in fact, it's true that your sentences should only be doing one job. So give each sentence one job. That job can be to get it to the next, to get the reader to the next sentence. So here's type form. Uh, they say, we just hired a professional photographer, thousands of them actually, that's not a whole sentence. With our new Unsplash integration, it's never been easier to stand out from the crowd. Oh, and did we mention it's free? They're making four points in four sentences here. They could have smashed all of those points into one sentence, but instead they're saying, new pro photographer, thousands of them, it's Unsplash, and it's free. Super easy to understand. Quick recap. Um, so we have established now that effectively using humor helps you build your relationships with your users, right? And now you know how to do it in some line levels. There's one more category that we're gonna get to. Um, and just in case this is feeling weird, um, everything that we are learning here, oh wait, my slides are different. That's good, there's an updated version. Last category, last category of punch-ups. Lead the way, people are sheep. You gotta tell them what to do. The first way to do that in your copy is by asking and answering questions. So if you know that your user is gonna have an objection and you need to answer that right away, Meet them where they are. This is text expander saying, hey, what if you don't want immediate snippet expansion? Use delimiters. 
And in another email to the lower right, want us to show you, not tell you, watch our video. They get right to what their user is thinking and they address those objections right away, leading them to what to do next. Another way to lead the way is to trail off with ellipses. Uh, this is like the copy equivalent of a drum roll. It's not great, but it's what we have. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, here's brain.fm, trailing off, building suspense, also giving us a nice line break so that there's, it's easy to parse this whole email. Uh, we have some good news to share with you, dot, 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 announcing latest updates. They also have an emoji, I love it. Although don't ever tell people that it's been a while since they've heard from you, they don't remember. And the last and most important way to lead the way, include a call to action. Please, please tell them what to do. Um, you have to have a button or a link in your email. Tell them what to do next. Here's a great one from Tunnel Bear. Uh, they're a private VPN service that I recently discovered. I love their website. If there's anyone here from there, let's talk. Um, and they say, upgrade my bear. It's super personal. Uh, it's written in the user's voice, my bear. It's on brand because it's talking about bears and not like upgrade my service. Um, and it's excited because there's an exclamation point at the end. By contrast, here's how not to write a call to action. Take a peek into our musings momentum and March updates. Why though? Why would I do that? There's nothing in that for me. It's somebody who really likes alliteration. And they were like, what can I alliterate with March? It's March, right? No one, no one is here from this team, I think. So I mean, you can send an email without a call to action. But it's like sending a pregnancy announcement featuring guns. You just shouldn't. You can, but you shouldn't. <laughs> like, oh. There are more than one of those on the internet. If you search pregnancy gun announcement, I'm just saying, there are a lot. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, all right, so to quickly recap everything that we've gone through, it's been a lot. You need to use humor, it's science, it's psychology, it can help you generate trust and love and increase retention. You should do it inside your app with your microcopy and definitely in your emails. Make fun of what's around you or make fun of yourself to avoid offending your users. And use those tricks I just showed you to go through your existing emails and punch them up line by line. So congratulations, you just took part in an improv show against your own will. Uh, you don't have to worry about being a weirdo because I will do that for you. And thank you so much. Questions? We do a, a ton of advertising, um, and um, we've tested so many different headlines. We've tested memes, too, and they work pretty well. What I didn't see you mention, uh, which we haven't actually tested, is using jokes in ad copy, headline, body of the copy, et cetera. Uh, have you tried, uh, what kind of feedback have you seen in using uh, it at the top of the funnel? So I've tested that with a couple clients, and I think it just comes back to whether the joke is going to attract attention, because at the top of the funnel, that's what you have to be doing. Um, so if it's a joke that you know is relevant to your readers, um, or it's something that catches their eye, or it's a callback to something else they've seen from you if you're retargeting, um, that would be effective. If it's just a joke for the sake of a joke, it's probably not going to work as well. Does that make sense? Cool. Someone else. Hey. Hey. I am in the funeral niche, and I'm wondering. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> what were you wondering, or were you just trying to make me feel bad? <laughs> uh, does does it actually work across all industries? <laughs> you know. On my website, it says, like, if you're in the funeral niche, like, probably not for you. So your results may vary. But I did just see um, an ad. Another copywriter saw this ad in the UK, and it's for a mortuary service. Uh, I'm trying to remember the exact line. But it was lighthearted, and it was referencing the fact that, like, hey, we're all just going to be dirt eventually, so why not save some money, basically? Um, obviously, you know your target client. like. If your target client is cool with death, then that could work. If they're terrified and going screaming into the grave, then no. 
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have two types of clients. They're either fresh out of college or they're a bit retired. Um, that's just the way it is. And I've tried humor in different ways, and it always backfires me in some kind of mm. way. Do you know a type of humor that can work across both of those demographics? For example, when I do gifts, you know, half of the group doesn't understand it. If I do, mm. you know, misspellings, the retired folks who are usually 70 to 80, they always like send me a very lengthy email explaining how I did everything wrong. Ah, <laughs> those sweet old folks, I <laughs> love them. Um, I have many questions for you, including whether you started with um, research into what your people thought was funny. No, not at all. Okay. Just what I thought was funny. That, yeah, well, that would be a good place to start. Um, and then now that you know misspellings don't work on the older people and GIFs might work better on the younger people, go that direction. And I think there's also, um, you bring up a good point that sometimes, especially with different email clients, um, GIFs might not render correctly for some people. And so they will completely miss the joke and it just looks like you messed up your email. So that's a thing to consider, deliverability. Um, do you see a difference in how we need to be writing jokes for like the B2C market versus the B2B market? Where you know, you're aiming at companies, maybe you, like reliability or strength are like part of your, your key points. And, and does humor detract there or does it work equally well because it's still a person who's making the purchase decision? So I will say that B2C um, has gone whole hog with humor. We see it so much more in especially retail emails. But uh, think of it this way. Would you rather have a president who can crack a joke about themselves? Uh, and does that make him seem stronger and more powerful in your eyes? Or one that can't take a joke? <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in the back. Uh, hi. Hi. So uh, I run a B2B business. How do you, fr how do you um, the, the tactics of doing the research and interviewing your customers to say, what do you think is funny? How do you frame that? Because it seems like a totally random sort of question to ask someone, what do you think is funny? And, and send them a survey or something like that. Yeah, it is random. Uh, and it will surprise people. And that's kind of part of the fun. Um, I like to sandwich those questions in with the existing research. So generally, um, if we're doing research by email, we're sending a survey, we're trying to keep it to like three questions or fewer. So you can ask the first two questions with the data that you really need to know and then reward them with the third question. Like, hey, just so we know, um, who's your favorite stand-up comedian? Or like, what show of these three is your favorite? Like Parks and Rec, The Office, or whatever. Um, I don't think, again, I don't think that people will be upset about it, they'll just be a little surprised and that makes you more memorable. Hey, Leanna. Hey. That uh, was a great talk, very actionable. Thank you. Um, so on our, like, on our email confirmation page when someone has signed up, we used to have a GIF of uh, Arnold lifting weights. Uh, and it's a pun because it, makes, it, it introduces our, our branding and our company name. But instead of two weights, he was lifting two cats. Yes. And I just thought that was like just a, a funny GIF. And most people thought it was funny. But I had someone make, you know, send us a super lengthy email about how we were like animal abusers and <laughs> that we so for the majority of people, I think they found it funny, but for some people, they definitely did not. So I was just wondering if you had any experience with those kind of reactions and how you should uh, deal with that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think even when you do everything the right way, you still, there's still a tiny risk that some people will get offended or take it the wrong way. And you saw with that, um, that mapistry data when we asked the email list what they preferred, there were, there were like five to seven people who still said, I liked the old emails. And at that point you have to ask, who's my ideal user? And like, who do I really wanna work with? Who's the most valuable for me? Um, what's the lifetime value of somebody who likes the GIF versus doesn't? Um, and focus on the people that are worth it to you. Yeah. Nope, I think we have time for one or two more if there are any additional questions. So a question about um, poking fun at your competitors. Mm. Advisable? Any tips or tricks or guidelines? Generally not a good look. Um, it's, it, it's offensive to them and it can be libelous depending on like what you say and where you say it. Um, and it just doesn't make you look good either because instead of pushing other people down, there's this idea in comedy that you should always be punching up. 
Um, so if it seems like you're punching down at your competitors, then it's kind of like not fun for anyone and feels gross and bad. Um, so I, I say stay away from it. I was just talking to someone in the audience. I don't know who <laughs> that was. Uh, hey. So we have been trying to bring humor into a very serious field, so we're public safety. So we work okay. with a lot of cops. Yeah. And I kind of um, get nervous about where to, how to push the line, right? Because we have so many cop donut jokes that we can kind of mm -hmm. you know, integrate. Like, how do we test to where we, we don't, I mean, do we have to just throw it out there and then just maybe offend people and then be like, oh, let's reel it back in? Or like, how do you baby step into that I, with a really sensitive, serious industry that you want to try to make have fun? Are, is your audience cops? Or are you working with cops for another audience? <laughs> yeah, it's all public safety. So mostly cops and then like okay. 911 dispatch and EMS and things like that. Yeah. And like, like when I have a relationship with them on the support side, like we're friends, right? So mm -hmm. I can joke. But when we're not to that point yet, how do we integrate that humor? Yeah, um, slowly and, and cautiously, I would say, like don't go whole hog with writing an email series that has tons of jokes and gifs. Like test a version of a joke in one of those emails if you're sending them. And, and I know I keep talking about emails, but like anywhere in your marketing copy. Um, let them get to know you, let them get to trust you, getting to know you, getting to like you, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then you can start to crack those jokes that you crack with people that you know better. Thank you very much, Leanna. Thanks, guys.